Shalom. Today we are going to begin a new series on the Gospel of John. We are going to investigate the Hebraic background of the book. Many times when we read things in the New Testament, they seem to be something brand new to us and different, things we had not heard of or thought of before. However, we find that there are roots for many of these things in pre-first century Hebrew thought. So as we start, we see the first verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Of course, this reminds us of Genesis 1.1, and it was deliberate on the part of the Holy Spirit to bring us back to the beginning, the beginning of Torah thought. It also shows us and speaks to the creative power of the Word. And God said, The world was created through the power of God's words. This is repeated in Psalm 33, 6. By the word of Yahweh were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. However, the concept of the word as God long precedes the New Testament. As you know, the word there for word in Greek is logos, which comes from a verb in Greek, lego, which means to speak. The concept was first written about by Heraclitus, a Greek philosopher from Ephesus, who lived from 535 to 475 before the Common Era. His concept was that the word is a fixed principle in the world of change. Later, the Stoics adapted a similar principle that the Logos was the power that controlled and ordered the world. This concept is reflected in a mathematical theorem called Brouwer's Fixed Point Theorem in the field of topology. The fixed point theorem is best understood by some illustrations. If, for example, you have a ball of dough and you are kneading it, the theorem states that one point will always stay in the same place. Another example might be in a cup of coffee as you stir the sugar in, as the fluid comes to rest, there will always be one point that was in the same place as when you started stirring. So this gives us a mathematical concept to go with the philosophical concept that the Logos is a fixed principle in a world of change. There is a group of writings which is called the Targumim. The word Targum comes from a biblical root, which means basically to translate, and we see it in Ezra 4.7, in the days of Artaxerxes, wrote Bishlam, Mithridath, and Tabiel, and the rest of their companions, unto Artaxerxes, king of Persia, and the writing of the letter was written in the Syrian tongue and interpreted in the Syrian tongue. This verb, the targem, is translated as to be interpreted from one language to another. The history of the Targumim we also see, even in Ezra and Nehemiah, when the people are standing and listening to the Torah being read, and the people cannot understand it, uh, either for lack of knowledge or for lack of context, because they are long removed from the time of Moses. So the Levites would come and interpret the words that the priest was reading from the Torah. It's this kind of interpretation. The Targumim have been preserved by the Yemenite community, even as a liturgical text. We bring them up because within these texts is the concept of the Memra, the word memra comes from the root amar, which means to speak. The memra is the word. It is distinct from God, but revealing himself. It figures constantly as a manifestation of the divine power or as a messenger in place of God himself. It is especially used as a substitute when an anthropomorphic expression is to be avoided. Remember, we are not giving a commentary on the validity of these concepts, only to say that these concepts would have been in the minds of the hearer of John's Gospel in the first century when it was written and expounded. The most famous of these Targumim 
is Targum Onkelos. Onkelos lived from 35 to 120 in the Common Era. He was uh, probably a convert to Judaism. And we have some examples of the way in which he used this word, memra, which is the word. In the King James, for example, in Genesis 28, 20 and 21, it is written, And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God, that is Elohim in the text, will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall Yahweh be my God. In the Onkelos Targum translation, it is written, And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If the word of the Lord, the Memra, will be my help, and will keep me in that way in which I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to wear, and bring me again in peace, to the Lord shall be my God. Another example from Numbers 23:21, the classic translation. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. Yahweh his God is with him, and the shout of the king is among them. In the Onkelos Targum, I have seen that in the house of Jacob the worshippers of idols are not, nor in Israel the workers of the work of lies. The word of their God, the Memra, there is their helper. And the Shekhinah of their king is among them. A little bit different translation. One last example. In Deuteronomy 33:27, The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. The Onkelos interpretation is, The habitation of Eloha is from eternity. And the world was made by his word, the Memra. He will drive out thine enemies from before thee and will say, destroy. So this is the concept of Memra, the concept of the word being God. Another concept is the Metatron, which appears in the first century writings. It is the name of, that Enoch received after his supposed transformation into an angel. And he is equated with the Son of Man who is enthroned in heaven. It appears that the origin might be Greek, metathronos, the one who is beside the throne or maybe behind the throne, sitting in the seat or by the seat of God. The Metatron appears quite a bit in the Talmud, which is a later writing, which gives some definition of what the Metatron is. So, for example, in Avodah Zarah 3b, it says Metatron and it gives the definition, the name of an angel who is also called Metatron is probably derived from Metator, meaning guide, precursor. He being regarded as the angel who went before the Israelites in the wilderness. You remember that God told the people in Exodus that he would send his angel before them to keep them in the way and to bring them into the place that he had prepared for them. So the Talmud constantly refers to this angel as Metatron. Going back to the concept of Logos, we refer to Philo, who was in fact a descendant of Aaron, he claimed. He lived from 20 BCE to 50 CE. He was a Jewish philosopher, but he was a Hellenistic philosopher, and he was interested in uh, incorporating Alexandrian philosophy into Jewish philosophy. He wrote that the Logos was the reflection of God, the image of God, the instrument through which God made the world, that the Logos announced and interpreted to man the will and the mind of God, and that he was also the firstborn son. So we see that in the minds of the people who are hearing John say that in the beginning was the Logos, and the Logos was God, and was with God, we'll look at that in a minute, that the concept of the word being God was not an entirely new or unheard of idea. We can track it through the idea of Philo with the Logos, the Talmudic concepts and earlier concepts, even in the book of Enoch, of Metatron, the one who is by the throne or near the throne, and also the concept of the Memra, the word 
where we see that Onkelo substituted in several places the Memra of God for the word God as it appears just in the Masoretic text. We also see in John 1.1 1, 1, that the word was with God and the word was God. In Hebrew, there is more than one way to express the concept of with. But one of those words is the Aleph Tav, and we have a whole series about that if you want to get more into that. But the Aleph Tav can be the word with, or it can also be the direct object. But John makes it very clear. Hadavar haya et Elohim. He was with, or he was Elohim, but very clear. Vahu hadavar haya Elohim. And the word was Elohim. In John 1, 2, and 3, the same was in the beginning with him. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. The concept of something being with God in the beginning goes back to Proverbs 8, where it speaks about wisdom. Wisdom is speaking. We see wisdom was with God in the beginning before anything else was formed, and that also wisdom participates in the creation. Proverbs 8.22 Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth, when there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not yet made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there when he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Also in Proverbs 3.19. Yahweh by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understanding hath he established the heavens. So we see that these concepts would not have been unheard of. You first century Jews who are listening to John's gospel, but they all relate to ideas that they would have already heard of. John is merely defining for them and making a specific definition that Yeshua is that word. Next time we will continue. In the meantime, Tasimita Inayam al Hashamayim. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.